A man found a wooden box when he was at work, demolishing an old temple in Iwate Prefecture. He asked the temple priest about the box, and he replied, never open that. But his colleagues opened the box without asking. Inside, they found a mummy with two faces, four arms and four legs. After that, the priest came to take it back and said, too bad, you cannot live a long life. After he told them, one of the workers died from a heart attack. One was housed at a mental disease hospital, and the other three collapsed with a high fever. The narrator himself got heavily injured, and he was left confused, wondering what that box was, and what in the world was that horrifying mummy inside of it. This is a story published on a Japanese social media site in 2005, written by this worker who was as confused as you are now about what happened in that incident. His curiosity and confusion led him to persist in search for some answers. He sought out the son of the priest that was summoned to the construction site. Apparently, the son was educated in the Buddhist ways, but decided to give this up and pursue a career in real estate instead, which reminds me of a certain someone in the manga we are going to talk about. It was apparently the son's responsibility to send the box to Kyoto, but it never ended up there. They were able to meet and the son told the story of how Ryomen Sukuna ended up in that box in the first place. According to him, in the 90th century, Mononobe Tengoku bought conjoined twins at a circus. This may explain why the body had two heads, four arms and four legs. Mononobe Tengoku was the leader of a heretic sect and had some weird tendencies. He locked up the conjoined twins in a room full of other people with deformities. It was said that the conjointed twins reminded Tengoku of an Asura or a power-hungry deity, which is why he wanted them to survive, thus leading him to stab all the other people in the room, leaving them there with nothing to eat but each other. Tengoku only opened the room when there was one survivor left, and lo and behold, it was the conjoined twins. As a prize for their survival, Tengoku then proceeded to starve and mummify them so that they wouldn't decompose. As mentioned earlier, he was a peculiar person. The sect dubbed the mummified twins as Ryomen Sukuna, who the twins reminded them of. Their statue-like remains were then wrapped up and became a symbol for their sect. Legend has it that they took the mummified twins with them wherever they went, and wherever they went, disasters, like deadly earthquakes, always followed. This may be what led Akutami to describe Sukuna as the type of walking calamity. After the last devastating earthquake, Tengoku slashed his throat, killing himself. Nobody knows why. And he wrote under the statue using his own blood that Japan shall perish. This act is believed to represent the continuation of the curse. This story does not need to be proven because it already is enough to inspire Akutami in his own depiction of Sukuna. Clear references for the inspiration can be seen in the first chapters of the story. A rumored curse in a place that had construction work in it. A box found by people who opened it when they shouldn't have. The box contains parts of the mummified deity himself, and so on. Ryomen Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen is different though from both mythology and this one story that was popular in Japan 17 years ago. In Jujutsu Kaisen, he was a human who became a curse and even transcended both to be his own thing. The physical appearance of what's known in mythology is present, except the mythology itself isn't there, at least as far as we know. We are still waiting for a brief Heian era flashback, or at least more crumbs and pieces of info about what and who Sukuna really is. Speaking of mythology, the legend of Sukuna is all the more known and glorified itself. Ryomen Sukuna appears in a Japanese book titled Nihon Shoki. It's a history book written in 720 AD, and he was described as a Japanese yokai demon who commits gruesome wrongs. 
Yomatsukuna in Nihon Shokai has 8 arms and legs in total and has 2 faces on both front and back. He battled with 2 swords and 2 sets of bows and arrows. It said that he was powerful and agile but ended up being subdued by Takefurukuma no Mikoto, a warrior who served the emperor of the time. It said that Ryomesukuna is from Gifu Prefecture in Japan. There is many mythologies and folklore about Sukuna left in Gifu. In this area, he is not a demon, but is described as a local hero. In the Seki city area, he was an ordinary human with two faces and four arms, and wiped out a venomous dragon. While his appearance isn't normal, the local tradition says Ryuma Sukuna was strong enough for two men, and also he was clever. He is admired as a brave hero who protected the people in the Seki area. It's interesting that Ryome Sukuna is respected as a great warrior without exception in the Gifu area. I guess the real Ryome Sukuna was a local hero but he went against the emperor and was portrayed as a villain. History is always told as the story of the winner. A lot more indirect hints at Buddhism and ancient rituals can be found scattered as references in Jujutsu Kaisen, like Kodoku, which is what Kinjaku is trying to do. Kodoku is a traditional Chinese Jujutsu. Various venomous insects are put into one container, then they kill each other. The last one that survives gets a strong curse. Basically, the cooling game in Jujutsu Kaisen that Kinjaku was able to pull off putting strong sorcerers in colonies and making them fight each other. And this isn't the only time where Kenjaku might have attempted this, but also maybe with Sukuna as well. In the manga, the character that stands out as a possible inclusion of the peculiar Tengoku is Kenjaku. Similarities are in the name, in their gruesome acts and their twisted ways of thinking. So maybe the inspiration went beyond just Sukuna in this story. And even with Sukuna, it doesn't just end there. As we know, his slashing attacks are dismantle and cleave, described like a kitchen knife. He can use fire as well. And an editor's comment on chapter 119 says, delicious death comes from careful preparation. Actually, Sukuna is closely tied to cooking. There is a tradition called Ryomen Sukuna and Pot in Japan. He used to cook hot pot by himself when he was in a war. The pot he used at the time is still preserved to this day. This could potentially have something to do with his power or his backstory. Gege again pulling inspirations from folklore and stories, mixing them around and coming up with original and unique ways of telling his own story. Thank you for watching, if you stick to the end, subscribe for more and have a great day.